Assalamu alaikum guys, this is Sam and a very warm welcome back to another Arabic language tutorial with me here at Arabic with Sam. So today what I wanted to do uh, on this very beautiful day, we have a beautiful day here in Cornwall. Um, I've just been teaching one of my students online, Iram, so huge shout out to Iram, she's on my book one. Um, and we're talking about something really interesting that a lot of students struggle with when they first start learning the Arabic language and they notice that, that the Arabic language when it's written in newspapers and even on TV and subtitles and stuff, when you watch Arabic, when you watch films, you have Arabic subtitles, or, you know, when you buy magazines and newspapers in the Arab world, they don't have these little vowel symbols on top, known as harakat. They don't have fathas, kasaras, and dhammas. And even at the end of my first workbook, I even start to phase them out a little bit. I like to get my students um, more accustomed to reading Arabic without the kind of visual clutter, as I refer, as I refer to it as. And, um, you know, she thought this was a, bit, a little bit strange, firstly, because I'm very strict with, with um, case endings and when you put a dhamma instead of a fatag, I take it very personally. I take it very personally and they suffer the consequences. So, um, but anyway, we, we were thinking that it was quite interesting because actually to, an Arab, to a native Arabic speaker, it actually makes a lot of sense. So I wanted to... I wanted to give you guys, who are native English speakers, I assume, uh, a way of appreciating why it's actually a really good thing. Why it actually makes sense in Arabic. Like when you come to a stage where you're confident Arabic speakers and, and users of the Arabic language, it'll make a lot of sense, actually. The reason why I refer to these harakat as visual clutter, actually, is because you don't really need them. And what I wanted to do was to demonstrate this to you with a few examples of some English sentences where I've taken the vowels out. Because that's essentially what it is, you know, when you write Arabic without harakat in, it is more or less the same as reading English sentences without the vowels in. And most of the time you can actually work out what an English sentence means even when it doesn't have the vowels in. So I'm going to show, I'm going to throw up an example just up here um, of an English sentence where I've taken the vowels out. So have a little look at it, see if you can sort of infer what it is probably saying. And, and bear in mind as well, because you're native English speakers and you're familiar with the structures of sentences and you're kind of expecting what words will come next in the sentence. So obviously that sentence at the beginning, we know that the word hello has an H and two L's in it and it's a normal way of us beginning a sentence. So as native English speakers, we're expecting that. And after hello, when someone introduces themselves, they will say, my name is something. So when you hear someone say my name, it's a little bit like in predictive texting when we do it on our phones. Our phone is anticipating what we're going to say because we're familiar with the structure of the English language and we're familiar with what words come after what words. So it makes sense that up here I've got hello, my name is Sam, and I like, and if you know anything about me, if you've been following my work at all, you know that I like, I love to bits, the Arabic language. Yeah, so it makes sense that I'd have a sentence up there like hello, my name is Sam, and I like Arabic, or Maybe I should have put, I love Arabic, but it doesn't matter. So let's have another go, another sentence. I'll put on this maybe a little bit longer up here as well for you to have a little look at. I'll give you a couple of seconds to have a look at it. So as I'm sure you guys can infer, like this sentence above is actually my way of signing out uh, of this video because we're coming to the end of it. I know that my camera is running out of time. So we're going to sign off with this one. Just, we're just going to do two, um, just two that we'll run through to sort of help us get a grasp of this concept. And uh, you can probably infer that this sentence is, if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So we're going to sign off with that. And uh, no, I really mean it. If you enjoyed this video, and I really hope you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Don't forget to um, hit me up in the comments as well if you have any other Arabic language conundrums. Um, it's not only my students who bring them into me, obviously people viewing on the YouTube channel and stuff, and obviously through my podcast as well that I've started recently. Um, obviously you're very, very welcome to get in touch with me through the comments and I'll do my very, very best to get back to you. So uh, that's it. For me for now, signing out for the day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.